In this lesson, I'm going to explain how to use the clone stamp tool. You use the clone stamp tool to take pixels from one area in an image or clip and then paste those pixels someplace else in that video image or clip or in some other video image or clip inside the same comp. Typically, you want to remove something that, you know, really you don't want in the picture or you can add some things that you do want in the picture with the clone stamp tool. So to follow along, go to Working Files, go to After Effects Projects, and then open up 0903 Clone Stamp. This project has one comp. The comp is a still image, this image here, and a video clip in it. We're going to work with both the image and the video clip. This is the paint workspace that I've adopted a little bit. I've added the project panel over here and the effects and presets panel over here. All right, let's get started. The clone stamp tool is right here. And when I click on it, watch what happens over here. You see all these little properties show up that have not shown up before because these are clone specific properties. Of interest to us are this group over here, the aligned lock source time and the clone source overlay. Right now we're aligned and I'll show you what that means in a second. The way the clone stamp tool works is that you tell the clone stamp tool, this is our source. This is where we're going to grab pixels from. And then you paste those pixels someplace else. So for example, I'm going to use this girl's face as a source. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key, it turns into a target, and then I click. Now the size of the cursor is irrelevant at this point. The target is just that spot. And I'm going to go over here someplace else, for example. And if I click and start painting here, it's going to paint that source over here. The farther I go, the more I can paint of that source. Now the fact that it's aligned means that if I start painting again, it's going to paint relative to where we started. So if I go down here a ways, it'll be, you know, probably toward her knees or something like that. If I go over to the right, which I probably won't be able to match on the screen here, but I start picking up this side of this girl over there, just picking up her blouse there in the sky. So it's all relative to the source. And it's important to use a line sometimes if you're trying to match something like the gradation of the sky. We're going to use a line. When we take the sky here and we put it on top of this girl later, we want to match that gradation as we go down. But sometimes you don't want a line. I'll click over here like that. And we'll undo the stuff we just did. Controller Command Z a few times. Here we go. Now I'll go get the source again. Hold on the Alt to the Option key. Click there. And now if I paint here, it'll paint where we started from, the source. But if I go someplace else, it'll also paint that source. It's no longer a line. It's just every time I put down the mouse button, it goes back to wherever the source was. Like that. Sometimes you want to do that too. It's very helpful to not be aligned sometimes when you just want to use the same spot in several different places. So I'll do Controller Command Z to undo those three things. And now we're going to get started. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want a larger brush. So I'll hold on the Controller Command key and then move my mouse to make the brush larger. And now I'm going to take my finger off the Controller Command key but keep my finger on the mouse so I can adjust the hardness. I want to have a soft brush because we want the sky to be kind of soft as we do this. We don't want to have a hard edge to it as we paste that in there. So there we go, nice soft brush. And now I'm going to go get the source. I want to have the sky be the source, and I want it to be pretty much in line with her hand here. So I'm going to Alt-click, Option-click right there. Now I've got my source, and I'm going to go and paste it on my target here by just clicking and drawing. I see I got a little bit of the edge of the girl's hand to the left there coming in. That's okay, we can fix that later. I'm going down the left-hand side here. Now notice the little plus sign to the left of the brush. That's the source. It's telling us where we're getting pixels from. If I go to the right, you'd think we'd be getting the new pixels, but it remembers what was there before, so it's going to start painting her all over again like that. See, that's not really a good thing. You've got to watch that plus sign and realize that wherever it is now, it's where those pixels used to be before. So I'm going to do Control or Command Z to undo that, and we'll do this again. Grab my source there again over here and start painting it out like that. There we go. You see how the right there, her arm shows up again? Just a little slip up like that, and that makes it difficult sometimes. But we'll just go on down the line here. Now we got that done. I'm going to take care of that hand now. Now that we've pasted this here now, we don't need to worry about the fact that that used to be there. So I can click over here again, and I can go down and take care of that now. It's like that. There we go. Now I'm going to go down the right-hand side. So I'll go over here and alter option click there. And then go down and take care of her hair like that. Run down the line a ways there by hand. See how that works? Probably want to do this one more time. I click over here again, Alter Option Click, get a target. I'm going to go up like this. There we go. Now, when I get down here toward the ground level, I want to be able to go right to left. It's a little easier to follow a line like this if you go sideways. 
So now I'm going to use something called the clone source overlay. So I'm going to go here to the left, and I'm going to hover my cursor here, my brush, right there where the center of the brush is that line. It's easier to line things up when you can put it in the center like that. Ultra option, click right there. Now I'm going to turn on this thing called clone source overlay. It kind of gives us a view of what we're going to clone there. You can see now we're going to be putting this here right there, which is what we want to try to do. So you get a chance to kind of preview how it's going to look, which can be helpful. Sometimes it's a awkward thing, but it kind of works there. See how that works? I'm going to go get another source over here to the right. Hold on the Alt or the Option key here. That'll turn off that view. Click there. Go back. There's our view again. I want to replace her leg right there with the ground. So I'll start right here and paint left. Take care of that. Now I'm going to just click away here for a moment on the selection tool. And that is pretty darn good, right? So that's how you use the clone stamp tool on a still image. If you've done this in Photoshop, then this is probably old school for you. You've done it a zillion times, but goodbye, girl. I'll just zoom out all the way here just to make sure we can see the whole picture. There we go. And you can see that where there was once a third girl, you now see sky and grass. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go over to the video. Double click on that to open it up in the layer panel. And I'm going to also display it over here by turning off the eyeball for the girls. And I'm going to zoom out on this thing by going shift forward slash on this side, but make it active. There we go. And we have this video clip. And the goal here is to take those red chips and replace the black chips with the red chips. We're going to clone the red chips and put them right there on top of the black chips. The trouble with this is, is that this is a moving image. It's a video, right? So as a video, not only do the red chips get covered up sometimes, but the black chips are moving. So we got this sort of double problem here. How do we get the red chips to be stuck in time without this guy's hand going in front of them? And also, how do we get the red chips to follow the black chips? Well, I'm here to tell you this is going to be kind of an exercise in futility. It's not going to be a very smooth process. It probably won't work perfectly, and particularly because I'm going to be moving along pretty quickly here, but also because it just is one of those things where it's hard to follow motion exactly when the camera's moving like this. But I'm here to tell you there's a solution to this, and it's called the tracker. And I'm going to talk about motion tracking in an upcoming chapter. So keep in mind that while this might be frustrating to do it this way, it's good to know how to do it manually like this, and then know that you can work with a tracker and probably have things go better. Let me zoom in on those red chips a bit here by pressing the Control plus or Command plus key a little bit. There we go. Take my hand tool, space bar down here, and move that in like that. And I want to then have this be the source. Go back and click my Clone Stamp tool, and I'm going to do something here that's not correct. It's got the old line things. So I got to undo that. And I'm not going to have lock source time chosen just to show you how that can become pretty messy if you don't click on that. So I'm going to go over here. I don't need to center this up perfectly just yet. Hold on the Alter Option key. And now I want to be right in the center of that chip. So click there to get my source. Now I'm going to take my hand tool, press the space bar, and move on over to the black chips. Now I want to paint that thing in. And if I paint in with a brush this large, it's going to bring in all the crud around it like that. I don't want to do that. So I'll do Control or Command Z to undo that. So I need to make my brush smaller, holding down the Control or Command key and using my mouse to zoom in a bit like that. And now I'm going to paint in the red chips. Now I've got kind of a soft edge brush here, so we'll see how this works. Might be too soft for our purposes, and I'm going to fix this later. This is a mistake anyway, so we'll fix it in the moment as we do it the second time. All right, now we've added those chips, and they're not perfectly aligned there. We could deal with that later with keyframes, but now at least you get a sense of how that works. And now I'm going to show you what went wrong, because as the camera moves, the position for the clone is a position inside the frame, and it's not just the chips. It's just the position in the frame. So as the camera moves, those chips move out of the frame, and the clone starts picking up stuff from someplace else in the video clip. Not what you want to see happen, right? So I'm going to go back here, and we're going to start that process over again. Control or Command Z a couple times here. Let me go back to the red chips. There we go. I'm going to clone them again. This time, though, I'm going to Click on Lock Source Time. You need to do this before you make your source selection. All right, I'm going to go get my Alter Option key here to turn on the target. Grab the source there, and I've got a source. Go back to the black chips here. Check my brush by holding down the Controller Command key. The size is good. Let go of the Controller Command key, and I want to make it a harder edge. They're just about completely 100% there. 
And I'm going to paint in the chips here. And if they're not perfectly aligned, I'm going to fix that later using the position and the scale properties inside the layer. So that's not so critical. But here we go. We want to make sure we get the whole set of chips without going too much beyond the edge because the felt on the other side of the image is a little different color than the felt here on the tabletop, that is. I think that's reasonably good. It's not perfect, but the purpose of the game is just to show you how to do this. All right, let's just pull back a little bit here by doing controller command hyphen. I'm going to open up the layer here and take a look at paint. And inside paint, we've got a clone stroke. There we go. And notice the clone stroke starts where we started, but I want it to last for the whole clip, the whole comp. So I'm just going to drag it left like that so that image there, that red chip, will be there the entire time. And now when we move the camera around, or the camera moves around and the chips move around, we're stuck in time so the chips stay in place. That's a good thing. That's what we wanted to begin with. Okay, let's just try to line these guys up with keyframes. So I'll go down here to transform, the clone stroke transform property group. And I want to keyframe scale and position because the scale is going to change as the camera moves. And now I'm going to just drag these guys in place. So I'm going to use the selection tool to do that. And wherever I've got those lines, that's what I can grab hold of with the selection tool. So let's try that again. You notice you get the little four arrowhead thing there. If you pull away, you'll lose that. So right over those little lines, you can pull that in place like that. And you can see that it probably needs to be scaled up just slightly there. There you go. Maybe like that. And we've put keyframes there now for that position and that scale. And I'm going to go forward now. As I go forward, the camera's going to pull back. And as long as it's pulling back in a smooth fashion, we don't need to put in a lot of keyframes. It's a good thing the guy's hand didn't get in the way. That's one of the things that would be a problem if his hand got in the way. But it didn't. The guy on the right, that is. So let's keep on pulling back here until the camera stops pulling back and kind of settles down. That's when you need to put a keyframe in. So right about here, we're going to put a keyframe in again by moving this thing in place like that and then adjusting its scale slightly. Maybe moving it a little bit different place just to get it lined up a little better. You're going to see that it's darn hard to get this right. But now I'm going to pull back here and we're going to watch that whole thing there. I'm going to open up the comp a little bit wider because it plays back more in real time than the layer panel does. Let's just play this and see what happens. You can watch those red chips. Now, it's not going to play in real time yet because we're RAM previewing. It's doing work here as it makes the copy and the paste as it does the clone. What's going to happen is that those chips will probably sort of slide around a little bit. It's really hard to lock them down perfectly. That's just one of the issues here with trying to follow the camera motion and make sure the chips stay in place. But I think unless your viewers are just totally tuned into the fact that that is a cloned thing, they won't notice it. Let's just go back and take a look at that and see how it looks now in real time. Here we go. Pretty good, but you notice how the chips slid there a little bit? So if you're going to do this, and it's not in the circumstance where I'm trying to teach it to you and do it quickly, you're going to want to fine-tune those little changes and the motion when you do keyframes for position and scale. But I think you get a sense now of what it's like to clone something when you're working with a video clip. It's not that easy. And you're probably going to rely on the tracker, which, of course, I'll talk about later. So that is how you use the clone stamp tool here in After Effects.